Right, so just to show you what spec I have um, on this machine, I've brought up the about this Mac window. So it says Mac OS High Sierra, 2010 model won't update anymore. So I can't get more Harvey or anything that's going to come after that, unless I kind of do something called a Hackintosh and use a patching tool. It has 8 gigs of memory, 1066 megahertz of DDR3. Now it originally came with 4 gig and I upgraded it years ago. It did help back then, but now it's kind of struggling to help with my coursework. I'm starting to crash when I'm using like huge documents on InDesign. Apple says that you can't upgrade it to 16 gig, but you actually can, as long as you make sure that you definitely get 1066 megahertz speed. And then I'll just show you the memory part there. There we are, so it says eight gigs installed. So there's a few things wrong with my MacBook, but it has been a really good daily driver. It's nearly 10 years old and it's still working. I've used this to DJ with, I've used this to do two years of uni work with. It is a bit slow and cumbersome and it's definitely heavy, but it's still, I would highly recommend Mac, even though they're so expensive right now. And there is issues with the thermal throttling, which is why I'm kind of doing this video. The new 2019 version is supposed to not have these thermal throttling issues. So the idea of this video is I'm gonna upgrade this as an experiment. And if it's good enough to get us through the year, that's great. If it's not, I'm probably just gonna make the leap and buy the 2019 version. It's currently September, and in October, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is rumored to be getting released, but it's supposed to be really expensive. If I want to get that, I might get that. If I don't, by the time it's October, the price should have been reduced. It should be, there should be some models in the Apple refurb store. So the Apple refurb store will probably give us a saving of about 350 pounds. Whereas my student discount is only around about 100. That's like one option I could take. Anyway, I'll get back into the video and I'll start the actual upgrade. So the things that I'm upgrading on this machine are first of all, the battery, definitely the RAM. Probably the best thing you can do to any kind of upgrade and the best value is to upgrade the RAM first. RAM and processor are probably the most effective things that are gonna speed up your machine. I'm gonna put an SSD in there. It's just the same size as the one that it originally came, which it's a 250 gig. SSD. I've got this caddy, which means I can take out the optical drive. I'll put this inside and then inside this little caddy, I'll put the old hard drive that's in here. So I could upgrade again further by getting another SSD and having that as secondary storage as well as an operating system disc, but I'm not going to do that just yet. And then the batteries here as well. So you will need like a decent toolkit to do this. You need like really small Phillips head screwdriver. You need a torque. And if you are changing the battery, you'll need another type of screwdriver, but luckily it actually came with the battery itself. But this little thing's done us justice over the years as well. I've got like a couple of different sets, but it's mainly the torque that you're looking for. Like I said, if you're getting the battery upgrade, keep that in mind that you will need this third tool. Luckily it came with this one, but I'm not sure if there is any out there that don't. I'll show you the box, just in case, that's the box. It was just one of the Amazon choices. Same for the caddy. The SSD, I got a smaller one because the choice was a 500 gig. So I saved about 30 pounds by like reducing it because it's not really that necessary for me right now. And then this RAM is time tech. For the 2010 one, don't slip up and try and get the brand Crucial because the brand Crucial don't do the 1066 megahertz. They do 16 double zero, so they do 1600 megahertz. It won't work unless you have correct speed that matches your machine. So I'll get into it, I'll shut this down and make a start. Okay, so what to the upgrading part of the video. Definitely get some kind of towel, tea towel, something that's gonna protect the surface of your desk and your laptop. You definitely need your tools at hand and it's probably a good idea to have some kind of cup to put your screws in, somewhere safe where they're not gonna roll off. Make a diagram to where things go, you can kind of just put the screws like next to the holes that go in anyway. So I'm gonna get into it and I'm gonna undo these and take off the bottom of the unibody. Make sure that your machine isn't plugged in. I'm just gonna lay them on the table in like the same pattern as the way they've came out because you'll see that the first three from the right are like tall screws and then this little one on the left is a shorter one. I might even speed this bit up in case it's like really, really not interesting. This is the insides of my MacBook Pro. The RAM's nicely easy accessible on these models. The battery's easy accessible, the hard drive is, and the optical drive is. The first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the battery. Like I was saying earlier, if you have a battery kit, you should get a different kind of screwdriver, which only has, has like three, so it's like a Y shape head. That'll be for these battery screws. So if you're not re replacing the battery, you may not have this tool. 
There we are, so that was easy enough. That's the battery out. I'm just gonna set that aside. I'll take out the hard drive next. I'll just take this little bridge out. I think these screws, you don't have to pull them all the way and the bridge just comes off. There we are, so I'll just put that there. You have the tag to pull it, and that's it really there. So it's a, it's a SATA connection, so that should just come out. There we are. And you also need to make sure that you keep these little things that are attached to your hard drive so that it mounts back into the bridge and back into this little section here. So the screwdriver that came with my battery set, the torque is actually too small for the hard drive pieces so I will have to actually use my toolkit that I've already bought. There we go, that's coming out. So here's my SSD really light in comparison to the old hard drive and obviously this won't make any noise whatsoever that's an old spinning hard drive mechanical this isn't and it came with this little bracket as well which just kind of fills up the space between that and the shell body but i've already put that on as a set of connection that's really simple put these screws back in there we go okay so that's the bridge bits put back on put the bridge back on So that's the hard drive installed. I think I'll do the caddy next and I can put the old hard drive in here. So that's just got a SATA connection. Just slide that in. So this caddy came with these little screws and they go into the bottom here. So the hard, I'm actually, actually I'll pull that back out so just so I can show. So as well as on the side of the hard drive, there's also these little screw holes for mounting and that means I can I can use them to securely mount into the caddy. Screw these in. So that is nice and tight, nice and secure. It's not going to go anywhere. Probably be using it as backup or as storage so it's not going to have an operating system on. So don't forget to mount the screws on the bottom of the caddy to make sure that the hard drive or SSD that you're going to put in is more secure. So that kind of has like a, a little mini SATA connection here. Not sure if that's the correct term for it, but that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so this um, little thing, which is either, I think it's the Bluetooth or it's the Wi-Fi. You've got to loosen this up a little bit to get the caddy to fit underneath. That screws a bit like that. That lifts up and then this slides underneath. Get the setter in. And that slides there, that's a bit more snug. That's in probably now. So I'll put this screw back in. Next part of the equation is I'm going to upgrade this RAM. So you have two little prongs here that you move out with your thumb. And then you move it again for the one underneath and then these should just pull out and you can see that these old ones are 4 gig ddr3 1066 megahertz so again make sure that the megahertz the speed of the ram is exactly the same as what you're upgrading from because it may or may not work the brand of this is time tech crucial do not do a speed of this size. Crucial don't actually sell this speed so if you are looking for 1066 I'd recommend you get Time Tech as the brand otherwise you might end up buying the wrong RAM like I did. Now I think I went wrong because either I got the number wrong myself even though I did know what number I was supposed to be looking for um, and I thought that Crucial made it so I, I must have done a search for that speed and Crucial and then I just got results from the brand Crucial, which weren't the right speed and I bought the wrong one. So it's time tech. So I'll put this new battery in, that should slide in. So again, just to mention the battery uses, the battery uses a different screwdriver, a Y shape. And I'll reconnect the battery. And there we are, so that's everything back in. So I'll put this on. The next stage is to add an operating system. So I don't know if you can see there, but I have Mojave fully installed on my SSD. So you can see macOS Mojave version 
14.6 memory 16 gigahertz of 1067 megahertz ddr3 which is really 1066 startup disk hackintosh ss hackintosh ssd macintosh hdd and then memory finally you'll see the 16 gigs and the two eight gig sticks of ram very happy with that if anything helped in this video great comment like subscribe all of that good stuff i'll try to help if i can hopefully you'll find something good from watching this i'll link everything relevant all the videos that i've watched previous to this thanks for watching cheers bye